Okay, kids, so we're back now, and um, we really want to emphasize uh, dynamics problems, which is covered in sections 2.3 and 2.4. 2.4 really starts to uh, look at friction, but we're going to talk about these two sections together. They're so closely related. Now, I'm going to remind you something that we learned in grade 11. When you're dealing with dynamics problems, Okay, problems that involve motion and the forces that cause the motion. The one thing you have to remember, and I talked about this in grade 11, is that acceleration, the quantity acceleration, is the only quantity that exists in the kinematics equations and also in the force equations because it's F net equals MA. So when you solve these problems, depending on the problem, sometimes you'll start over here, the dynamic side, where all the forces are, and do a whole bunch of work to find acceleration, then take acceleration over to the kinematic side. Now you have acceleration, and maybe with some other information, you can find time, velocity, position, things like that. Other times you may be given information like time, or velocity or position and you find acceleration over here first so you start on this side first you find acceleration then you bring acceleration over to this side the dynamic side and then you proceed with the problem it really depends on the problem but remember that acceleration is the intermediary it connects the two sides now as I mentioned in the previous video um, Grade 11 was all one dimensional. Grade 12, two dimensions. So you know it. All of what we learned in grade 11 now has to be broken down into components, X and Y. So when we're talking about acceleration, as I wrote here, there's two components to it. Acceleration, X direction component, Y direction component. Same thing with velocity. Two components, the X component, the Y component. Position changes as well. It's not just D, it's X, Y, ordered pair for position. So everything has to be broken into X hat and Y hat components, even on this side. It's not just F net equals MA, it's F net X component, right? Equals the mass of the object times acceleration X component. F net Y component is equal to the mass of the object times acceleration Y component. And... When you're summing up all the forces, adding them all up, you add up all the X components of the forces together to make the equation now. Over here, you add up all the Y components of the forces to make up the rest of this equation. So every, this, These types of questions can only be solved by using components. And what I'm going to do now for this rest of this video is go through a bunch of examples so you get an idea of how this works. Here we go. So here is the first example. Here is the first example. Here's a sled. And on the sled, there's a person here. And the mass of the sled and the person together are 40 kilograms. There's a force of kinetic friction of negative 1.0 newtons working on this. So obviously, as you can see here, we've got X hat and Y hat Cartesian planes set up for this problem. You can imagine the X and Y Cartesian plane being right over this. What else is happening here? Well, there's this person, the pink person, and they're pulling, force pull. How much? 40 newtons. In what direction? 30 degrees to the horizontal. So 30 degrees to the positive x direction. There it is, 30 degrees. What do they want us to find? Well, they want us to find the acceleration of the object, and they want us to find the normal force. Now, you may be thinking, normal force, that's easy. Wait for it. It gets more complicated in grade 12. Normal force in grade 12 is not the normal force calculation you remember from grade 11. It's much more involved. So, as always, and this is really important this year, you need a nice, organized, structured solution. And the way we do that is, you guessed it, grass, right? G for given. 
So when you write G for given in dynamics problems, it's always a good idea to take the problem and redraw it as a free body diagram. And that's what I've done right here. So as you know, everything in a free body diagram is represented as a rectangular shape. So there's the normal force. There's the force of kinetic friction. There's the force of gravity, which is the mass times the gravitational field strength. And then there's the force pulling. Now, normal force, force of gravity, they're all in the y direction. No need to worry about components. They're all y components, either positive y or negative y. Force of kinetic friction is always parallel to the surface, so it's always a x component, negative x component situation. But force pull, force pull, okay, it's not into components. So before you even start working on this, you have to take force pull and divide it into force pull y component and force pull x component by using the magnitude of 40 newtons and the 30 degrees, which is right here. 30 degrees. So pause the video and see if you can't get these answers for force pull y component, which would be positive 20 newtons y hat force pull x component which would be positive 34.6 newtons x hat pause the video see if you can't do that calculation next uh, we write down r for required and one of the requireds was acceleration now we have to remember now this is a vector so it has to be broken down into acceleration x component acceleration y component what else do they want us to calculate the normal force well, normal force is all in the positive y hat direction, so there's no need to break uh, normal force down into components. What do we do next? Well, we do what we did in grade 11. We write down F net equals MA, F and F net is adding up all the forces. But now we have to do the X component of F net equals MA and the Y component of F net equals MA. You have to break it down. So the first thing you do is you write sum of all forces x components is equal to f net x component, which itself is equal to mass of the object times the x component of the acceleration. So this is what we did in grade 11 so many times. You do the same thing here. Sum of all the forces, their y components, add up all the y components of forces. That's going to equal f net the y component and that equals the mass of the object times the y component of the acceleration. So if you go back and look at the picture, let's just do x. We'll do x first, okay? In the x direction, the only two forces involved are force pull x component and force of kinetic friction. So look what I did. I put them in here. Take a look at that. I just said, hey, I'm going to add up all the forces. Well, that's what you get. Force kinetic friction plus force pull x component. And of course, it still equals mass times the x component of the acceleration. All right. Now we're going to go over to the y side. We're going to look at all the y forces. So if you take a look at all the y forces, you've got normal force, positive y hat direction, force of gravity, also known as weight, negative y hat direction, and then force pull y components. Those are the three forces that are acting in the y direction. And we write it down. Normal force plus force of gravity plus force pull y component equals mass of the object times the y component of the acceleration. Well, it just so happens in these types of questions, the y component of the acceleration is zero. And the reason is it is zero is the sled, the sleigh is not moving up or down. There's no change in the object's motion in an upward or downward direction. If there's no change in motion, that means acceleration is zero and we can move on to 
getting rid of a y and just putting a zero in here because anything times zero is zero mass times zero is still zero all right let's continue and we'll do some algebra so let's go back to the x part so all i'm doing here is i'm bringing this y underneath here and i'm dividing so i divided both sides excuse me this m under here i'm dividing both sides by m i'm dividing both sides by mass and i'm left with this equation right here so all i did is i divide both sides by mass next is substitution time substitution time so i'm just plugging in the numbers you know how i like to do it i like to have each number in, in its own bracket so look negative there's the direction one there's the magnitude newton there's the unit so negative one newtons for force of kinetic friction force pull x positive 34.6 newtons all divided by the mass of 40 kilograms of course you follow the rules of bed mass and you'll get a solution of acceleration x component is positive 0 0.85 meters per second squared we already know just from our looking at the object acceleration in the y direction is zero so we already know that next let's go to the y side here so what i'm doing here is remember i want to solve for the normal force that's the force i want to solve for so since i want to solve for the normal force right i bring these two force of gravity and force pull y component to the other side and they become negative so here's the negative sign here's the negative sign then i remember that force of gravity is equal to m times g, mass of the object times the gravitational field strength. But remember, I still got that negative sign out front. I can't just ignore it. And then minus force pull y component. Next, I substitute in the values. What's the mass? 40 kilograms. What's the gravitational field strength? Well, according to our Cartesian plane, down is negative. So G is negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram. What's force pull? There it is, positive force pull Y component, I beg your pardon, positive 20 newtons. So you put that all in there and you get a normal force of 372, 372 newtons Y hat. And you're done. Now this is the very first problem you've ever done where you've got an object on a surface you've got the normal force and you've got force of gravity but they are not equal and in opposite directions this is the first time you've experienced that and you'll experience it many times the reason is is that the sled is being slightly lifted off of the surface it's not being lifted so much that it's off the surface there's still contact with the surface okay there's that contact is still there but the contact is not as strong so what happens is the sled does not push into the surface as much so the surface's normal force does not push up as much so it's this force pull that is producing a normal force that is usual that is smaller than a situation if if it was just no one pulling at all so the days in grade 11 when you could automatically assume this normal force is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction of the force of gravity that can no longer be used in this type of situation where you have another force or a component of that force acting in the y direction you have to sit and calculate what the normal force is okay so here is another kind of sleigh problem and um, it's from section 2.4 so we're jumping ahead a little bit here but it's similar to the one we just did and it's practice question seven so pause the video pause the video and have a read of that question then i'll show you how to approach it because it's a very classic typical type of question here and it's good that you see how it works okay here so here's the situation so this will be our given right here in the diagram 
and we got a 47 kilogram sleigh we're going to set up our cartesian plane here y hat and x hat it's 47 kilogram sleigh there's the normal force acting on it here and force of gravity force of kinetic friction and this tension pulling the sleigh forward and it's acting at 23 degrees 23 degrees and we don't know what that is that's actually part of our required to find this tension but the only way we can solve this problem is through components so when we say I want to solve the tension what we're actually doing is solving tension Y and tension X so we got to keep that in mind what else do we know here well we know that there's a coefficient of kinetic friction we learned about that in grade 11 and it's 0 0.11 and we know that this sled which I've drawn the free body diagram here is being pulled forward at a constant velocity so acceleration X and Y component are both zero well we have to solve this how do we solve it well that's in the analysis right analysis and as I've said many times when you do analysis in these dynamics problems the starting place is always Newton's second law but broken down into the X part and the Y part so look sum of all forces so instead of writing F net I'm just going to call it sum of all forces X component is equal to mass of the object times the acceleration in the X direction sum of all forces their Y components is equal to the mass of the object times accelerations Y component now I'm going to make a bit of a change here this is a new way of doing things from this line on downward and what we do is we don't use the vector symbol these are vectors but we're going to drop the vector symbol and we're going to remember that eventually when we go to substitute in values we always plug in positive values positive values so if we take a look at the free body diagram the force is acting in the X direction is there's this tension X in the positive X hat direction and force of kinetic friction in the negative X hat direction so instead of having the vector symbols here I impose a direction by putting a negative sign in front of force of kinetic friction notice there's no more vector sign and a plus sign in front of force of tension X component this is a very useful method for doing some of these problems and then eventually as I said when you go into your substitution you just plug positive numbers in you just plug in the magnitude you don't worry about direction because I've taken care of it here in this line so similarly here if you take a look at the free body diagram and for Y direction we've got this tension acting on the sled so we got the tension Y component which is positive it's upward force of gravity negative downward normal force is a positive force plus notice once again I've dropped the vector notation and I'm saying to you folks that are reading this the direction comes from these signs right here So let's continue this line right here tension X minus force of kinetic friction is equal to zero Y zero there's no acceleration we know that acceleration is zero mass times zero is still zero and then we remember from our work with friction that force of kinetic friction is equal to mu K times a normal force now since I've dropped the vector notation and I'm getting the direction from out front here I don't need to put the magnitude signs in I just put mu K times a normal force okay then what else well I know that tension tension X component let me get that into the black there we go tension in the X component right if you take a look at the free body diagram tension X is adjacent to the angle so let me move that up there look here's the angle tension X is adjacent so tension X becomes tension cos theta just like tension Y will be tension sine theta so that's the substitution that I've done in the line right there come on now 
There we go. It's not cooperating today. I'll have to do it this way. That's all right. So that's why I put in this tension X. Keep the positive sign right. We're getting direction from the free body diagram. Is tension the whole magnitude of it cos theta. Similarly, I go over here and I get tension Y is tension sine theta minus Fg, force of gravity, plus the normal force is equal to zero. Why zero? Remember, this is being moving with a constant velocity and it's not going to move up and down anyway. So this Y acceleration would have been zero regardless. Next, what do we do? Well, we substitute mass times the gravitational field strength in for force of gravity. Notice there's no vector notation here. Where am I getting the direction from? I imposed it from the free body diagram with keeping in the back of our minds that eventually when we go to make substitutions, we're only going to plug in positive, positive values. Okay, we're only going to plug in positive values. What do I do next? Well, I'm going to take this equation here, I'm going to rearrange it so it is so that it is expressed as normal force equals something. Well, how am I going to do that? Well, we're going to do that by bringing this plus tension sine theta over to this side, this negative mg over to this side, and they change their signs. So that's what I've done there. Okay, so the next step is we're going to take what the normal force is equal to. See this expression for the normal force right here? And we're going to plug it into right there. So that's what I've done here. So the positive T cos theta comes down, negative mu naught, but where the normal force and I'm going to put negative T sine theta, see, plus mg all in a bracket. So the normal force has been replaced by this term in the bracket. Then what I'm going to do then here is I'm going to do some distributive multiplication. So a negative times a negative gives me the positive here, mu k t sine theta. Negative times a positive gives me a negative, mu k mg, mu k mg, and it equals zero. Then remember, I'm trying to solve for tension. So this term here does not have tension in it. So I'm going to bring it to the other side and this negative becomes positive. All right. So we're left with T positive T cos theta plus mu K T sine theta is equal to positive mu K mg. All right. So just let that sink in a little bit. So now I'm going to do some factoring. So I've factored out a positive T out of here. So it just leaves the cos theta. Factored out a positive T out of here, right? So all I'm left with is mu K sine theta. And this stays the same, mu K mg. All right, and we can put a plus sign there if you want, just for completion's sake. There you have it. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole term in the bracket and I'm going to divide both sides by it so that I can isolate for this T. And that's what I've done here. Look, cos theta plus mu k sine theta. I brought it down right there. All right. Now we do the substituting, right? And the whole way this is going to work is if everything that's substituted in here is a positive value. Remember, that's the deal we make by dropping the vector notation very early on and then imposing a direction, positive or negative, from the free body diagram. So what I've done is I plugged in all the numbers, did my calculating, and I get a tension, 52.6 newtons. If I want to make it a full-blown vector, it's 52.6 uh, 52 newtons at that angle of 23 degrees to positive x hat. So this sled example, a little bit more complex, a little bit more complex, more equations, more steps. Okay, so, you know, if you have to go through the solution again, do it. Just slow down the video and take it step by step, pause the video, look at each line yourself. And uh, in a future video, I'll do some more of these dynamics examples. Thank you.